Hi everybody, Dr. Mike Strecker again here at Paws and Cause Animal Shelter. Mm -hmm. Today we're going to cover ear mites. We get a lot of our, our outdoor cats that come in as strays um, that are surrendered that have ear mites. And ear mites are a parasite that infests cat's ears. They can infect dog ears too, um, and rabbits in some cases. Um, the trick with ear mites is you want to do an ear smear to identify them to make sure they're there. Typically, you'll see a buildup of dark debris in the ear canal sometimes. And this cat actually doesn't have a lot of it, so it's hard to tell. But uh, I'll show you when we do an ear smaking. We always want to check ears on our patients when they come in. We do a good thorough exam, and one of the areas is the ear check. And on our cats, it's not unusual that we'll find um, debris. So then what we need to do to confirm whether that is an infestation of ear mites or an ear infection or just build up a wax is we need to do an ear smear. So we'll go in and take some sample out. And we try to get some of the chunky stuff like that. And we'll take a look at that, and we're going to put it on a slide and look at it. Now, cats typically don't have too many ear problems compared to dogs as far as just like infection. So if you see debris, irritation, or scratching, or shaking their head, sometimes they'll be scratching excessively back here, and they can even lose hair back here. If you see that on your cat, and it's an outdoor cat especially, or a new cat, um, you probably want to take it into your vet and get a check, because ear mites are a pro common problem. Um, some cats will get ear problems from allergies, particularly food allergies. Uh, and then rare cases, cats get infections, but dogs tend to have more, more infectious type problems. So we're gonna look at this. We're gonna come over here. Typically what we do is we try to take a slide. We'll use a little oil. And then we're just gonna spread the debris onto the slide and, and mix it up and then take cover it with a cover slip. So pretty easy. Um, very easy to identify in the microscope too. So for even new people using microscopes and stuff, you can usually identify a mite, no problem. I'll chop it up a little bit just because otherwise if it's too thick, you can't see the mites either. If they're in there. And then we're gonna look at it under the microscope. If you have ear mites, um, in the old days, people used to just go, and you can still buy this stuff over the counter, but that treatment is an older product that is uh, that doesn't work as good as the newer generation products, isn't as safe, and requires daily treatment for many weeks. Um, so generally speaking, you're going to want to get one of the newer generation treatments. Revolution is one. Um, at, um, there's other products out there, too, that can be used. Milbamite is a direct treatment. And uh, those products are going to work much better at treating these things, usually effective in one to two treatments. We tend to do two treatments here at the shelter just to make sure our cats are all clear before they're adopted out. And we have lots of little friendly mites here. So hopefully we can get, a, get you to see this. It's going to be difficult since we don't have a video scope. But I'm going to try to find a good field with a few mites crawling around. There's a few dead ones. Kind of sleepy ones. Let's see if I can find an active one. We'll see if Tanya can get this to focus in. It's very difficult to use your phone to look in a microscope, um, but we're going to try that and see if we can show you guys what a mite looks like. We can try that field and see if we can get it. It's really hard. You can kind of see that one's not moving. Let's see if we can find the moving one. There was a moving one in there. Same one. I got to pull the screen down to that area. Okay, let me re refocus the screen over. And over. Let's try that. Seems like the phone is focusing on one area of the microscope. There it is. So there's your mite crawling around. So you can imagine having hundreds, hundreds, even sometimes thousands of these mites crawling in your ears, digging around. They like the they burrow, they eat the wax and the blood from the ear, and the ears become inflamed and irritated. So I think that would be kind of an unpleasant experience. So we're gonna treat it here. So the first thing you want to do is clean the ears. Cats hate having their ears cleaned. 
There are a lot of different ear cleaners out there. Remember, anytime you're doing a clean ears in a cat or a dog, you always want to use approved ear cleaner for cats or dogs. Um, better quality ones are medicated versions that you may have to, need to get from your vet or are specific for certain things like this. This is one designed for uh, yeast type infections in the ear. But a good general cleaner that's labeled for cats and dogs is fine for cleaning for, prior to treating for ear mites. Um, when you clean a cat's ears, they don't like it. Um, and this is why the new treatment for ear mites is so nice because you don't have to put something in their ears every day. Cats are not a fan of ears being messed with. Um, when we get done, we'll look like a drowned rat and our ears will be held down flat and they just tend to dislike it a lot. So we're gonna try to clean out some of that debris, actually remove some of the mites. One thing about mites, um, mites are usually transferred directly from pet to pet. They're not like fleas. Um, they don't reside in the environment um, for long. Um, so most of the time if your pet has ear mites, they got it directly from rubbing against or getting, coming in direct contact with another pet that had them. Um, so in that case, you wanna treat everybody in the house if you have mites. And what we really recommend if you do have an outdoor cat is to continue to treat the, to keep the cat on a, on a preventative, a monthly preventative like Revolution or something along that lines. And that'll help, that'll help prevent the buildup. Now we did a little bit of wiping here. I'm just gonna dry the outside and we're gonna try to, to clean a little bit. Now when you clean ears, the morals, just like when you go to your doctor, they say don't put any too big thing too bigger than a finger in, but if you do ever use a Q-tip, one thing with a Q-tip is just hold it with the tip very showing out. You don't wanna hold it really long because that way if the kitten jumps or something, you might go too deep. So if you hold it short, you'll be fine. And then you can use that to kind of get some of that debris right at the surface there. Now we are lucky with this kitten. Even though there's mites in there, there wasn't as much debris. But we'll try to clean it out a little bit here and dry it a little bit and go from there. And you can see I'm cleaning where I can see. I don't want to just go jamming down into the canal and go too deep because that could cause trauma and it could also impact the wax deeper into the canal. You got to let the ear cleaner do the work for you. And take that out there. So again, just where you can see and hold it short. And you can see we're getting a little debris. Now our first thing we're gonna use is Milba Mite. Milba Mite is obviously designed for mites by the name. Um, and then we'll follow up probably with Revolution in a couple of weeks just to make sure that we get rid of the mites and that we're not transferring to any other cats. Um, so Milba Mite comes in a packet like this. And gotta tear it open. Once we get it open, it comes with the two little vials which have to be deposited into ear. Now this is different than Revolution. Revolution looks similar to this, but you'd never want to put Revolution in the ears because it would be very, it would burn and sting. Revolution is a product that goes on the back, and Revolution does treat ear mites, but we like to start with the milba mite on the first treatment here because it's more direct. So you squirt the contents into the ear while still keeping from shaking. You want to massage the contents around so that way we can coat all the mites with it. And I even rub it up on here and a little bit on the fur here because some of the mites might be crawling out onto the fur a little bit or have some eggs out there. And remember, you got to treat every everybody in your house that potentially could have ear mites. So all the cats, dogs, all need to be treated at once. So it's better to prevent it than to have to treat it. And there we go. Now we look like a drowned rat. They shake and they kind of hold their ears down and they look like they're not too happy. But, but they'll be happier once the mites are dead. Okay, thanks a lot.